to the show. We're here to go live for Power Book 2, Season 3, Episode 8. An excellent episode. I will say this Season 3 has been probably the best season of Book 2 so far. And Dirty Ball Sacks then got rubbed out. Damn. He done survived so much and went through so much. I didn't think he was going to die, to be honest with y'all. I thought he was going to make it. Um, and and that's how it go in life. You go through so much and survive and come out unscathed. And the one time you really ain't doing nothing serious or it, it shouldn't have been the worst is the time that catch you slipping. And so, uh, you know, he survived Ghost and Tommy and all the stuff that he done been through to get caught up by Theo Rollins, of all people, a man he just helped save. And this is just, that's how life goes sometimes, though. The one you least expect, the thing you didn't see coming, be the one to take you. So definitely uh, rest in peace to Cooper Sachs. DBS, Dirty Ball Sax, Shane Johnson did an excellent job with the character. Uh, went from being a, a jerk to then being an asshole, one of the most hated characters on the show, to then kind of being a little likable and he ain't so bad, to then being two-faced and not liked again, to then, I don't know. I kind of didn't really hate Sax as much when he died and uh, as much as I still don't like Tariq. I still don't like Tariq. <laughs> Whereas Sax, uh, a lot of his stuff, I kind of, kind of, you know, let slide. I don't see Sax as hated as much as Tariq. I don't know. What do you all think? Uh, put a DBS one if if you think Sax is still one of the is still hated. You still hate Sax. Put a DBS two if he ain't that bad no more. He was all right. I'm gonna go with the two. He was hated at one time. Oh man, horrible. But now he ain't as bad. And Jenny, I actually felt bad for Sax, man. Jenny broke his heart. <laughs> Jenny, Jenny, let me tell you something, Jenny. You don't know, but all you have, Jenny, is your own ambition, Jenny. And that's sad, Jenny, because I loved you, Jenny. And I, we could have had something, Jenny. I snitched for you, Jenny. It felt good in you, Jenny. But now... I do not like you no more, Jenny. No, I do not. <laughs> Jenny broke his heart. He had to give that little speech at the end. She say, I ain't got no protective custody for you. Damn, Jenny. You just gave him the death sentence. Boy, ain't nothing colder than a heart of a you know what I'm saying? Anyway. <laughs> Damn, DBS. Man. Nah, Jenny, I don't like Jenny. You came back and gave me love, Jenny, but you had AIDS. You gave me the love, finally, Jenny, but you had AIDS. And you killed me. <laughs> she came back and gave him some, but then tainted it. Took away the protection. Let him hit with no protection. Damn. DBS, you shouldn't have been hitting that with no protection. You should have made sure that protection agreement was, was locked in tight. You know what I'm saying? Shoot. She took off that protection. Most guys like to take off the protection. He didn't need that protection taken off. She left him to the wolves. And and he was waiting in the in the parking lot. He wasn't wasting no time. Damn. So, you know, this episode, though, was pretty good. I think the Tejada's overall 
are not going to live other than Kane, which I was always saying he's my favorite one. Shout out to Big Daddy Kane. I told y'all that he was going to get with Effie. I've been saying that since the very beginning. But we see he didn't finally got up in there like swimwear. He came up into the room. He supposed to be checking for Diana and, and letting her know he saw them little nips out. He forgot what the hell he was talking about. Next thing you know, he was up in the little Effie. <laughs> Media One say, who next to die? Drew. Drew. I I know you like to I know you like to drink here. I know. I look, man. I I it, you be with Mr. Stripe, white boy, okay? Cause you can't be with this. I right, I I know. Alright, look. Alright, look. You have everything, okay? You have everything. And, 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 and you you couldn't be with this, right? You 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 didn't want none of this. You know what I'm saying? You didn't want the real chocolate. You wanted white chocolate. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and we could have had that. You know, I, I climbed Mount Everett on a routinely basis. I love to sit on the summit of Mount Everett. Okay. And then you come out and then you don't leave me. You come out and leave me, but you couldn't be with. Uh, and now I had some, I found something when you left. I found that K and you, and it had, I didn't, and I found, and now it's all broad. <laughs> <sighs> Why well, are you you completed me and, and now it's all messed up and I can't get in there uh, <sighs> what was it <laughs> he had a straight breakdown in the damn uh, <laughs> Drew is dead I'm, this is why I'm saying he's a basket case in shambles he destroyed over losing Everett, and now Everett then came out as gay in the NBA. He like, no, we could have been the first gay couple of the NBA. Now you with him, he looks like your agent. And I did find somebody. I had a Gordo, and, and it was really Gordo. It was, but he took my poppy. I said, Hello. Your name is Gordo. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Anyway. <laughs> he a basket case all over the place. But what was even tripped out is somebody recorded it. Talking about whose mans is this. <laughs> and damn. Because at first, backtracking just a little. When we saw them earlier in the episode at the table. I'm thinking, why they not asking where Gordo is? So then we later see that he's like, I don't know where he is. Like, the trouble in paradise, huh? You know, like the chocolate, you have it, the churro. Where's the chocolate? We see the chocolate. Where's the churro, huh? Where you do it with the gordo, huh? With the puerco, huh? Oh, okay. Your chorizo. You you using your chorizo on me, mi amigo, me, mi hermano. <laughs> So we later see that the moms, y'all know the name. I can't remember it right now. What's uh, Gordo and their mom, Evelyn? So the brother show, Drew, talking about now he gone. He could lie and say, we broke up and he left. He left town. I don't know where he went. But... In the end, Drew will be dead, and I believe Monet will die at the end of the season. If not, she should, <laughs> but I think that if she doesn't die at the end of this season, she's close to death next season. I think the Tatadas that will live is going to be uh, Kane and Diana, you know, so... Um, Lisa, thanks, Evelyn. Yeah. Um, and for those that don't know, on YouTube, it is a delay when we stream. So it's like uh, around 30 seconds or 20 second delay from what I've noticed before. So 
you know, uh, but hey, it is what it is. But I appreciate it, though. So anytime, sometimes when we're saying stuff, you guys are watching it. It's 20 seconds sometimes below, but um, I appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, but uh, I definitely think that Drew is the next to die on this show. And uh, Method Man, Method Man, he did a damn good job this episode. He pulled out the 4 5, though. He was ready to take sacks down his damn self, huh? <laughs> 305 Mr. City and shout out to everybody watching and all the great comments uh for this first reaction we up early in the morning um after just watching it on the app um 305 Mr. City say Jay you tripping they ain't gonna kill two Tejadas not in the same episode so I don't know maybe I didn't make it sound clear but I don't think they're gonna kill them both in the same episode and I say that they should kill Monet this season, but I know it's only, what, two episodes left. So I doubt they will kill both of them this season. So Drew will die, and I definitely think Monet will be gone by next season. Uh, it, it should be close, but truth be told, they probably won't kill her. They may just make her last to, to the end of the, the series run. Um, but I think that their storyline has run out to me. Um, they are put into a box where I think Uma will kill Monet. You know, you guys got to keep in mind if she finds out that she killed, uh, you know, Dante Mecca, then Monet is dead. Monet can't do anything. Who she? What she don't have any power really, right now. Not against them. Those type of adversaries. So I don't think. Uh, I don't think that she has much protection anymore. Plot armor or protection. Uh, if they was trying to write the story accurately, the way that they have been writing the direction of the characters. I think that this is only going to be a matter of time. I think Evelyn actually will probably kill Monet as well because she's going to find out. It's, Evelyn already knows Monet tried to get her to kill Lorenzo. And now if she finds out that Gordo is the one that did it, she can easily put two and two together. And then now Gordo's missing. She could kill uh, Monet. So I think Monet has way more enemies and way more reasons to die than to live. Um, Lisa Phillips, what's up, Lisa? Uh, you say Evelyn going to kill Drew or one of the brothers. But that's true. Um, she probably will. And then I think they might get they might get them both. Um, but here's the one thing uh, that I would say with that is that if Drew was killed, I'm sure she would probably up her protection or security. She should if she was smart. Um, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. Um, but, yeah, Monet ain't looking too good. Kane, no, he my MVP for this episode. Um, although, I thought that he came up with the sugar, sprinkle a little sugar <laughs> for Effie. But it turned out that that was their plan from the get-go. Um, so, I don't know. But I will give him credit for playing the long game. The long dong game <laughs> and getting up in there with Effie and uh, mission accomplished because he been wanting to get with her for a minute. And uh, it seemed like they might be a little p a power couple if if they can stay together. But Effie got a lot going on. So uh, and then it's a couple other things. So I'm going to backtrack because Rashad Tate is well this uh, episode. So. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. But this is my opinion, of course. 
But uh, you could put a T1 if you think Rashad Tate had chemistry with uh, Tracy Chapman. You know what I'm saying? Old girl with the long braids. Uh, it put a T2 if you think they didn't have chemistry. So when I saw them together and he all over her talking about let's get married, I'm like, what? So I didn't see that. And I'm wondering, like, why he want to marry her and all of this and that. So I didn't see that chemistry. And I was wondering, like, what is you sweating her for? And she trying to make you give up campaign contributions and this and that and whatever. Like, girl, bye. <laughs> so I don't know. But he was funny. When he was talking about, she said, I talked to Bruce Shanja. Hey, look, I ain't looking at the titties. All right, look, the titties bounce around and they hop out on their own. I can't help it if I have to try to be a gentleman. Put them back in, tuck them in, give a light little plump, fluff them up. But, hey, I'm just being a gentleman. <laughs> anyway, um, so JKE say, I didn't know. Him and her was kicking it. They kissed once. Now they in love. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, okay, so they said they had some type of relationship before. Okay. How in the world is he talking about marry me all of a sudden? He was just with a baddie. Okay. With a little, uh, that dress probably wasn't appropriate for the function. But now all of a sudden you in love like what happened okay he was always unless she the one that got away or something I, I don't know but i thought that uh that didn't didn't come off right and uh old girl don't seem like she likes him to me like it seemed like tate even though i didn't see where it came from it seemed like he liked her but it never seemed like she liked him or or anything to me so I was thinking like man why you with her she don't even seem to like you so anyway um and like Lisa say I, I did like I say her when they said they had some type of previous relationship but like you say they says she says that they were in love in college these people is like how old is Councilman Tate he gotta be at least 45, 50 years old. So college was 30 years ago. Savannah, you you hit it right on the money. No ripple. I was sitting here thirsty as can be. I do have a couple little things I've been working on, though, with my background. Let me see if I can. I do have a couple little drinks over here. Let's see. Let me drink some of this. Oh. Y'all gonna see me pass out up in here. <laughs> anyway. I say Councilman Tate about my age, so that's why I say that. Yeah. Crystal Black say 30 years ago is only the 90s. Don't forget. Hey, I'm a 90s. Well... I grew up in the 90s. I mean, you know, that's my age, so I got it. <laughs> but it was a while ago. I don't hold the flame for nobody from 30 years ago still. I don't know. Maybe some people, they still got that flame in their heart for, for somebody from 30 years ago. Uh, I guess that flame burned out for me. I got one for you. <laughs> you want that hen dog? It dog. Got that hen dog. Hen dog. Danny Lugo say, when force coming back on? So far, I don't know, but hopefully soon. I know it's been completed. For those that are interested, we did film season two of Force last year. So it was done last year. Jay Lynn, you ain't lying. I do need to pour out one for, for DBS. Hold on. Hold up. I'm about to change up some things. You ain't lying. I do need to pour out a little liquor for Dirty. Dirty B. Let me see. Let me turn the green screen. Let's see. Got all this junk everywhere. 
There we go. Alright. I ain't gonna crack open this one yet. Get the, the VS for, for DBS. Nah, I'm gonna just get the regular. He earned it, man. Shout out. Shay. Been on the show for how long? Seven years? Take one to the head for my man Shane Johnson, aka DBS. Y'all right, he did earn it. I should have thought of this sooner. So this this buzz for you. I'm a I'ma chug the whole rest of this all for you. All right, back to the regularly scheduled program. <laughs> Woo. About to break out a little Remy. Have another little shot for, for my mans over here. You say, not the lips. <laughs> Smooth. Woo! I had to let some of that heat off of my uh, off of my chest. Hold up, <laughs> smooth. All right. So, <laughs> DBS. I did need that. Woo! What's up, B? How you doing? How you doing, sis? Damn, scratch my scratch my neck. Look at that. He ain't talking to me now. Nah, now nah, I'm about to really be funny. But up up no I'm joking. No. Nah. Anyway. So in the beginning of this episode, speaking of having a drink, we see uh Davis having his beers and uh then he finds out that Diana been arrested because this episode pick up right after the last episode in and so DBS figure out a way to like manipulate Davis and he goes in there to get the information from Diana and Davis thinking everything cool until he get the call from Tariq and Tariq give him the warning like pop from the barbershop and uh what's up B greetings from Tulum that's what's up be safe on the travels happy for you um so uh once he find out that you know, Diana been arrested and uh and then he find out from Tariq that Sax is, is crooked, then he tries to get his stuff together. He first ready to damn near kill Sax. He went and pulled out the damn four five about the damn drawer of his office. I'm thinking, why he got that gun in his office? <laughs> He did have it in the safe, though, but he wasn't playing with him, though. He went straight to hood mode, and uh, it took Tariq calming him down, like, hold up, you can't go kill him. And so he ends up going down there himself, getting sobered up a little bit, and uh, getting some coffee, going down there, and we see that they got Diana in there getting questioned. Okay, mamita. Okay, mamita, you let us know. We have you on the camera. Okay? You going in there and you are trying to pull the drug into the wild and you pull it out. We know it. you do it with Rico. I know Rico. Rico, my cousin. Rico Suave. You Rico. We're going to pull you with Rico. Okay? We pull you with Rico. You going to pull it out. We got you. Okay? My name is Blanca. I've been working on the cape for years with the Sempadri. I ain't do nothing, but I will one day. I will. I will get me. <laughs> say, I got a hard on. I have a hard on for this. Okay? I have a hard on. And I will be coming. Okay? Mamita? So you can play the game all you want because of your familia. You said, Diana say I'm a first time offender. And you call, you coming because that little punk tried to call about selling drugs out of the little school store. 
said, no, no, mamita. I calling you because I don't like it, you. And I don't like it, the San Padre. And we're going to pull you all down. Yeah, mamita. <laughs> you think that you know Spanish because you tejada. I am real Spanish. Okay? You don't play with me. You think that you know? You don't know. <laughs> so, Diana, she held it down. No, she didn't get shook. I thought that she was going to... Uh, I thought that Diana was going to implicate Monet somehow in there, but she didn't. It was funny when when Diana got picked up by Mon when Monet the next day. She's like, I want to get out. She's like, get us, change. I want to change. She's like, I'm going to change and slap you upside your head. You better get your... <laughs> uh, yeah, that was funny. Uh... Jason G said, I don't understand why I couldn't just arrest Effie in the first place and not waste time chasing her with drugs. Well, they didn't have anything on Effie as far as the drugs. They could have arrested her in the first place for the attempted murder. They could have. Um, but they wanted to use her to bring in the other people as a Rico. They was kind of using her as bait with the drug thing. Because if they arrest her for the Lauren attempted murder, then they probably won't get the other people on the drugs because then they'll know that she got arrested. They'll change up their habits, this, that, and the other. But if they can uh, investigate her, catch her, that's why he said when Sax said follow Effie and it'll tie in everything with the Wall Street, with Tariq, with the murder and everything. That way they can look like it's a Rico and she works for Tariq uh, following his orders. And then they can get her, Tariq, Kane, Tejada. So that's why they were following her to try to do that. Yeah, they were trying to prove the Rico. But if they just wanted to arrest her, yeah, they could have just went and got her for Lauren and then that would have been it. And normally that's what would happen with most people that attempt murder unless they were in part of some big criminal organization or Rico and they wanted to use that as leverage to maybe get more. So that's all it was well Jason G say murder is worse than selling drugs and then they could have forced her to snitch that is true but that's not how the law necessarily work just you don't get always more time for murder than you do for selling drugs some drug dealers have gotten more time in prison than murderers so yeah taking a life is worse than selling someone drugs but but also these drug dealers are murderers too at least that's how the police see it i mean of course we know it so they look at it as they're taking down multiple murderers and drug dealers not just we gonna let a murderer live but we want drug dealers they think Tariq is a murderer also and the tahadas as well so they look at it as taking down a bunch of murderers and drug dealers, not just one. Um, and yeah, she could snitch, but if she don't have proof, it's her word against theirs. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, but uh, we see that. So, yeah, and that's if anybody else was wondering why that was the case, that's why they were trying to use her to wrap up everybody uh and exactly this is like what happened with big meech jke say like big meech exactly they didn't actually catch big meech selling drugs or having drugs on him or committing murders or things like that but because they did a rico in the conspiracy then people that were associated with him or worked for him allegedly then their crimes could be connected to him as saying they were carrying out his orders so yeah he didn't do it but 
he told them to do it, so he's responsible. Because if he didn't tell them to do it, it wouldn't have happened type thing. So, you know, that's how they trying to bring them all down. Rico is what? Racketeering, influence, corrupt organization. So, it's usually for the mob type thing. Because you'll never see, like, for example, John Gotti doing the crime. But whatever crimes or things that were being committed, he was allegedly ordering it to be done. Um, so later we see Tariq come back to the Tejada's house, tell them right after Diana got arrested that it's the Rico. So now they know <laughs> when Moneto came to go and find out about Diana and, and go up to the school First thing he do is over there in Effie And where he investigate In them draws Hold on let me get a little evidence Oh yeah Jack Pot baby Jack mother And Pot Effie was sitting there little, little nips was showing He was like yeah That tuition was nothing I see you want this I know what it's like man see some things because I see what I want <laughs> you know what I'm saying but it's alright like, you sure you don't want nothing he had to play it off no I don't want nothing girl them draws been on my mind since day one what is you talking about no nah, I don't want nothing girl I just want you to to make it you know what I'm saying I'm a what the hell they call that <laughs> I'm an angel investor. That ain't it. What the hell he tried to act like he was? <laughs> Whatever he is. That ain't it. No, girl, I don't want that. Want something. Effie. I go around helping college students that are behind on tuition all the time. That's what I do, girl. We good. Draws. Yo, nips is hard. I didn't even notice that. You want to give me some? Good shot, bet. Girl, come on. <laughs> Bad. Right. Bianca Brick. What is this? Uh, Brinka Copeland say she threw it and he caught it. You ain't lying. He caught it like a bomb. She came up like, you didn't want nothing? No. I'm just, a, I'm just a helpful guy. All this drug dealing and killing stuff. That's just at work. That's work stuff. But when I'm off the clock, no, I go around finding underprivileged people to help and do something positive with my money. She stepped up close with her little short ass looking up to him. Battered them little eyes. He put that lip on her. Said, do he try to fool? Talk about some dog. No, I don't want nothing, man. Ain't nobody going around paying no dang on Ivy League tuition for free, man. This is an investment in ass. This is you talking about? This is like investment in Bitcoin. I want this to to grow. This investment gonna become something. <laughs> Straight up, and I ain't talking about no degree gonna be getting some seven degrees of separation between us is all I'm talking about. What the hell? So, you know what I'm saying? Jay Lynn say that was expensive cake. You ain't lying. But you know what? He marinated in that cake, didn't he? Hey, he ain't hitting quit. He laid up in that. She he like, I gotta go. Ain't nobody asked you to stay, girl. I just paid rent up in that mug. I put a down payment on that at literally. A down payment. I paid for a semester's worth of ass, okay? That, when you open them legs, that's my dorm room. That's where I park my Cadillac. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> park my box to my Cayenne. My Cayenne pepper. Porsche. <laughs> so, it's straight up. But, uh, <laughs> nah, man. He, he definitely won her over. He played the, the long game and then he played that long game 
And uh, it looked like him and Effie might be the new power couple. Tariq, Tariq get hard around Braden. He get hard around Effie and these females. We can't, you know, he, when Kane be talking, I be quiet. When he leave, I start talking again. Kane done checked his ass without having to, without trying every time. All right. He saw Kane and Effie, and he like, Monet, did you know about this? I don't care who doing who, okay? Oh, that didn't know what, who gonna get that recall. And he a, ain't nothing he was going to do about it. He, he ain't about to whoop that ass. You What would you go do? Nothing. You know you didn't forked up, right? You, <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You thought you was going to get hurt with, with Diana? No. Nah. You about to really be hurt when you start seeing them giggling and, she, and Kane picked her little ass up and put it on the wall. Put him on the glass. Dow. You going to be coming to make little drops in her dorm room with holes in the wall on every side of the room. Damn, what happened? Kane, you know him. He love putting my head through the wall. <laughs> Well, if I was a little stronger and older, I would do that too. I didn't know you liked that kind of stuff. <laughs> Jealous. I didn't know you liked that. I was trying to be respectful. I don't put Diana's hole through the wall. It messes up her hair. <laughs> Shut up. Blah. Tariq ain't gonna know what to do. He gonna be crying. He gonna wanna get out of the business all because of that. It's not fair. Straight up. Lenora Wilson. Diana said to Monet she was thinking of transfer at school. Monet told her she was thinking of going upside Diana's head. That's what it was. I that's why I say slapping upside the head. That line was hilarious. Uh, that line Mary J delivered right when she was saying that and she was looking at her like she was taking her serious y you know mama I'm thinking about going to school I'm, I'm tired of all this. I, I just want to get out of here I, I just want to transfer and go out to another school uh, okay well I'm thinking about transferring and going upside your head you better get in that damn car shoo mama you always be mean talking about hitting me and stuff <laughs> ah, that had me lying, laughing right there. I actually laughed out loud on that one. Bust your head. That's what I've been thinking about doing. Um, <laughs> we later see um, DBS. Damn, man. I'm sad, man. DBS is gone, man. Him and Jenny relationship then fell apart. Jenny didn't Put them, put them out there to dry. Lenore, you ain't lying. That is a black mama for you. That was a real line. I've heard that and I've seen them type of lines said and heard all my life. And I've said some lines like that to my kids. Well, my child only got one. And of course, we all know you ain't about to really do it, but you, you telling them, move, let's go. Hey, like you really abusing and beating them. But anyway, we see that Drew is at the table with Monet, and they all there with uh, the Gordo family, Evelyn family, and they're saying that uh, we need to lay low for this Rico, and that you cool, ain't nothing gonna touch you. The brothers don't want to do it. Hell no. We make it our money. You don't tell us where to store. We don't need to do it. If it's no touching, oh, why would we store? We move with the cocaine when we want it to. She's like, no. We're going to wait. We're going to pull it on pause. I don't want any more of me finally in Yale. I don't want you in Yale. Okay? No. We are on the way. By the way, 
where's Gordo? Uh, everything's fine. Yep, everything fine. <laughs> Bad Drew was so obvious that it was guilty that something else was going on. I mean, what? Oh, I mean, that right there was so obvious. And then we see that his brother say, So it's trouble in paradise? Huh? I see you want to climb on Mount Everest again, huh? You don't like little Mexico? <laughs> you don't like little Mexico that Gordo has? So they already got an eyebrow raised on Drew and we will see because it's so obvious that they going to come back and put it together that Drew killed Gordo. Monet basically got her own son killed by doing what she did. And, uh, you know, B. Hayes says Drew will get killed in the finale. I, I would see. I can see that. I can see that. Um, and then they'll probably take out Monet next year. Um, I can definitely see that, though. Um, one thing that is kind of getting on my nerves, though, on this uh, storyline is Braden and the little Ponzi scheme, Western stuff. So they are. Which, I, oh my God, I wish Tariq would have lost that trust fund money. Oh, I want him to lose that money. You don't deserve it, you little bastard. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so, what I don't like about it is like, how did he figure this out so easily? You know what I mean? He like an intern, barely there. Now he figured it out. And now he's got this conscience even though they doing all this shady stuff to people, but now he got the conscience of trying to get the money back. Now I can understand if Monet was putting the pressure on him saying, I want my money cause I kill you. But I guess he feel bad if Tariq to weak loses his, uh, his inheritance. But like the Westons are supposed to be so rich and so wealthy that they should be able to give him his money back. Like, Ponzi schemes only fall apart when people find out and everybody tries to get their money back. Or, like with Bernie Madoff, when the market crashed, seriously, everybody tried to pull all their money back out and he didn't have enough money to give people because he was never really investing it properly. That's the thing. But uh, they should be able to give some of that money back. But the thing that tripped me out and uh, and Catherine Reese, what's up, Miss Catherine Reese, watching on Facebook Live. I appreciate you. She say, who was live streaming Drew and Everett? That was some random person in the bar, but they said when uh, Gordo's brother, he's like, hey, look, it, it went viral. So I guess it went viral. They did show it on YouTube. Now, of course, me being a YouTuber, I already know that wouldn't have happened that way because it takes a lot for your videos to be seen on YouTube. So it's not that easy to post a random video and it go viral you can post a random video on facebook twitter or even instagram and get traction but youtube is more difficult to just post up a video like that and it go viral not to say it can't happen but that is much more difficult Anyway, that's me being a little technical because <laughs> they made it seem like something could just get posted and go viral on YouTube and it ain't that easy, um, especially not for, for that. Yeah, he was breaking down and, and sounding, you know, whatever, but 
that's not even something that would even go viral on YouTube. But anyway, they saw it, which is the downfall for Drew. Because now he can't say, unless he say we broke up and he left. Then he can say something, but I don't know. Um, his hot top went viral. JK should have used Twitter or IG. Yeah, true. But I think most people that are not on this side of the business may not realize that that wasn't as accurate as they made it seem. Anyway, um, with that Ponzi scheme and Braden and them, he figured it out. He only been at work a month, but they supposed to have all the bases clean. But one thing that I did kind of get a little confused about was when Tariq told RSJ, uh, you know what I'm saying, that it was a Ponzi scheme. So I thought RSJ was kind of a crooked dude, possibly. Turn out he's not. But how did he not know this was a Ponzi scheme? And then I didn't like how he was coming at Tariq talking about, I did this because of you. What? Hey, man, first of all, you a grown-ass man. You asked me to come into your meetings. You asked me to come to your damn Italian stuff. You What you mean you did the deal because of me? That means you a fool if you're doing a deal from an 18-year-old intern. I thought you was the richest black man in the world. And you talking about you doing stuff because of me? I ain't like him saying that. I'd have snapped if I was Tariq. But, uh... Tariq Lorenzo, I know, right? Trying to get that damn lottery ticket. You better RSVP, RSJ, more like RSVP. Anyway, he talking about, well, let's go to the SEC, which I think was probably their best option maybe. But if they did do that, then everybody that invested with them would want money and nobody would end up getting their full amount back. So I guess by doing that the way they're doing it, they can get their money off the top first before everybody else finds out and takes the rest of the money out. So they basically about to take their money back by taking other people's money. Oh, well. I'm wondering how much uh, RSVP decided to invest with the Westerns because he made it seem like he was about to be broke now if he uh, if he if this went under which I'm thinking well damn he a dummy why would you put all of that money with them um, so we'll see but I do like how they were able to get uh, Braden's uncle to kind of capitulate to their demands but I don't think it's over um, I definitely think that he will find a way to get some type of revenge um, for for what they did you know to him so definitely definitely think so um Hold on one second. Um, Lenora Wilson said that RSJ uh, invested about $3 million, she believes. Okay. Well, if that's the case, he should be okay. If you one of the richest black men in the world, I mean, you one of the richest men in the world then. So, to that uh, effect, you should be okay. Not to say you want to lose three million, because who does? Uh, I don't want to lose a dollar. <laughs> so uh, definitely, definitely ain't trying to do that. You say my encyclopedia words. I'm about to ask you which one capitulate. <laughs> Breaking it on down for you. See, you gonna have a little bit of everything over here. A little bit of entertainment. Little jokes education get it all man 
<laughs> anyway, um, now we're going to have to go on to the man of the hour, DBS, which, man, dang, just sad, sad, sad to see him go, actually, man. Uh, been so long seeing him on the show. He survived so many death defying incidents. <laughs> well, I won't say so many as if he's, uh, you know, Ghost to Tommy. But he definitely should have died a long time ago trying to oh brother alright I was trying to pull up this one thing hold on one second oh I know how I can do it um so, you know, uh, he started off as one of the lawyers with Angie. Who would have thought he would have been going this long and ended up the way he did, man. Um, I'm trying to do two things at once right now, so just give me one quick second. second all right so appreciate that i have to send a little message um maybe have a surprise maybe but um so we see this sax i think he had kind of a change of heart in a little bit um when he talked with diana because yeah, he's still trying to work with Jenny, but I think that he was kind of on the fence on is he the good guy or the bad guy? And uh, when they asked him, you know, we'll, we'll burn you when this information is out about uh, Effie. And so... Uh, he said when he was in that office and, and he looked around and he looked at Davis and he thought about it, he was like, yeah. I think when he did that, he was thinking like, man, he's about to basically turn on the person that saved him. He was almost unemployable nearly after what happened. Uh, he was supposed to go to jail. And uh, and then this man got him a high-paying job, resurrected his career, and you sold him out for some love, for some coochie. And in the end, she was using you the whole time, and uh, that that was sad. Jenny, Jenny got him killed. Jenny got him killed because of love, and. When he said that last speech to her, she cold because you could tell he was hurt. And he told her, you know, when she said, I will take, I can't provide you that protection. Um, basically giving him a death sentence because now they, everybody knows that you was a snitch and we're not going to give you any protection, which it looked like they wouldn't have been able to help him anyway because. <laughs> He had a damn Uber lift waiting for him, and he ain't know uh, in the back seat. But uh, you know, that was that was messed up because she made it seem as if she risked everything, but all she was really risking was maybe career things. Not to say that putting your career on the line isn't something, but he was putting his life on the line and she hung him out to dry and now I'm interested to see what's going to happen when she learns of his death 
you know, she got that man killed. And what's tripped out is that Theo Rollins, he didn't have to kill Sax. And it's going to make it harder on Davis because now it brings more questions. Why would he kill the attorney that just helped him get free? You see what I'm saying? Why would he kill himself after that? And then they know, and everybody knows, that he was an informant. Davis doesn't know exactly what has been told. So it, it made things worse. And Tariq, one thing I will say, man, Tariq has seen some stuff now. He's always watching some stuff, but he didn't watch his sister get killed. He didn't watch this man Sax get killed. He didn't watch this man commit suicide. He didn't see his father get shot and flip over the damn balcony, bust his head, break dancing on the floor. I mean, Tariq been through some stuff, so uh, I still don't like Tariq St. Patrick. I still want him to get his in the end. I hope he lose that trust fund money. You want to be a drug dealer? Well, now you got to sell drugs because you ain't got no money. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, it's, it's messed up that DBS went out the way he did considering... Everything he been through, and he been there since episode one. A day one OG of power. Got to give him congrats. He always brought good acting to the show. He made people hate him. That's great. Great job. Made people then, uh, like I say, I hated DBS. <laughs> Dirty ball sacks. And then I started to like him. I kind of understood a little bit of what he was going through. I kind of felt a little bad for him and stuff. But then I kind of didn't like him when then he started to, to start snitching on Davis again. So, you know, he was a complicated character. Um, and damn, the way he went out, shot in the back, close range, dying out there in the street. Damn, considering all that he went through, he the last surviving member of his office. Everybody in that office got killed. I would have been quit that damn job. <laughs> Angie, Greg, they damn, uh, the Spanish guy, I can't even remember his name. Angie had him set up and killed. Richard Tompkins for the $5 super chat. I appreciate the support to the channel. Help to keep the lights on. You said long live the coop 2014 to 2023. That's a 10 year span, damn near. Steady paycheck. <laughs> hey, man. It's the entertainment business. So, a lot of times, you know, people forget that when we watch entertainment, yeah, it's entertainment for everybody else, but it's. A job and business for others. Love the job, have fun and all of that. But uh, you know, it was a good run. Cause in this business you never know. You never know how long or where your role may go or what may happen. So with that being said, sometimes and I will say a lot of times actually, the performance of the actor will make writers and showrunners maybe increase that part and expand and keep that character going. And so it's a lot of little things that come into play with with roles and how roles that probably weren't thought originally to be much can end up going on a 10-year run. So I'm going to give them credit for doing a great job as well. And uh, bringing it, you know, whether you made us hate you for being an asshole <laughs> or understanding and having a little sympathy for you 
Uh, he always did a good job. So definitely uh, appreciate that. And, uh, you know, sad to see Saks go, man. All right, I'm going to wrap this episode up and uh, get ready to give it my rating, my Mosco. Did I cover everything on this episode? I think I did. Uh, let me see. What did I miss? I do like how Monet ended up going and crashed the golf course. Said, you need you some suntan lotion. You look a little pinkish. Ooh, that's good. I <laughs> don't know how she found that out. Um, I talked about Drew. <laughs> Rashad Tate. I think they, uh, I like how they're working his story in with the debate, but just working his story in because I know that they decided not to do the show, the spinoff with him, at least for now. So I do like that uh, they kind of working in that character more. And uh, I like to see where that's going. Um, we also saw Junior. Junior! Um, which is another thing. I like how they brought Junior back. And uh, I'm interested to see what uh, what's happening with Junior. Lisa Phillips, please talk about those bad wigs. I know you're talking about Monet. Monet hair, I did notice that. She had something pulled all over her face when she was blinking. It was like in her hair. <laughs> of course, she always wears red, little devil. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, them wigs, that was some big ones. Uh, I saw that uh, Effie was wearing an off-white, uh, that off-white um, robe. When she uh, got up, I don't know why they say, uh, this is a ghastly. We want to come in. It's a ghastly. Okay, hold on. You want to do a rest. Why they say it's a ghastly? Let's open the door. They playing them games, but uh, she had that off-white. That was nice. Uh, Jay Lynn say Junior is ghost son. <laughs> Junior. Hey, Tari. You are my brother. Hermano La Onda Holmes. I am your inside man. <laughs> no, uh, Kane, I was just about to say that next. That sweater, that black sweater with the face on it, that boy was nice. Kane's sweater was on point. Kane's sweater was on point. Tariq has some type of brown sweater jacket thing. It was I. Right. It was all right. I wouldn't really rock that, but it wasn't the worst. Um, but uh, overall, their wardrobe was cool, but, you know, nothing that really caught my eye other than that off-white robe. Um, Savannah said, who's you, Nor? <laughs> Who's Junior? Junior is Junior. Why you in? Yun. Y O R. Junior. <laughs> you, yeah, Junior. Hey, we have to put the Junior on the key. And Junior tell you the droga. And you know why? It, it's sugar. It is azúcar. It's azúcar. It's no droga. Junior. Why you doing? <laughs> nah, Junior was uh, Angie's nephew. Junior was Angie's nephew. He's that uh, FBI, the young FBI agent that was in there testing uh, the sugar. That's Junior. Angie's the one that Angie was paying tuition for. That's Pa's son. We saw him in the last season of uh, Power, and uh, it was, what, at the funeral and there's some other stuff. But, yeah, that's Angie Nephew. Now he's in the FBI. I hey, am now a cop. I will get revenge from my own Timitia. I will crack at the key, and I will crack at the reason Padre. <laughs> uh, I hope Junior. Bust Tariq. That'd be good. 
get revenge for for Angie and but I mean uh Tariq wouldn't be really payback for Angie but oh well somebody got to go now right before I do this last mosco what do you all think is going to happen with Sack's dying message to Tariq and when they find his body are they going to see that the last person he called was Tariq but he said I know where Tasha and Yaz are and if I die that information dies with me now I don't know why he would say that cause they are witness protection so somebody know where they are Sax ain't the only one now if he was going to tell him off the record that's different and I see what he mean by that um but I'm wondering how that's all going to play out and if they, you know, may investigate and try to do something. And if he deletes the voicemail, I don't know how things are going nowadays with the digital world. We know Tucker Carlson, <laughs> they was able to go through his text messages and emails and stuff. I don't know. If they can go through voicemails and things uh, for people. But if they able to pull up them voicemails or something, then that will definitely be a difficult situation for him to explain. Because he's talking about call off the dogs because if I die and then he's dead. So then they make it look like Tariq ordered a hit on him. Which then could feed that Rico case even more. So, I don't know. Um, and Lauren, uh, when they had her sitting in the car to ID Effie, I was surprised that she would do that. But then again, when I thought about it more, it's not that surprising because she wants to get out of witness protection. She's tired of being cooped up. She she wants to get on with her life. And Sax told her that Tariq didn't try to kill her and it was only Effie. So in her mind, she probably feels like if I put away Effie, then I can go back to my regular life. Because Tariq and everybody else don't want nothing from me. She was the one trying to do it. So... That's why at first I was like, why would she do that? But then I thought about it and it made sense. She's probably trying to hurry up and get this over with. Because I remember she even said to Sax, her own parents don't know she's still alive. So that's going to be difficult when they come back and find that out. So, um... The homie Jeff says, ain't no way they can put this all on Effie. I agree. This is way too much, too complicated. And they've been looking at a lot of this stuff before she even came around. So I don't think they are going to be able to put all this on Effie. But I think that part of what they were trying to do is throw them off their case enough with Effie to make them look like they don't have a case so it almost worked when they went and Junior didn't find no drugs but they didn't give up they didn't just say oh well let her go let's go find somebody else let's leave her alone that's not what happened and I don't know why they would think that that would have been the option because it's not like that would have they was going to say, oh, well, forget it. I apologize. My bad. Hope you have a good day. That ain't going to happen. All right. I'm about to go ahead and do my rating for this episode. The Mosco. All right, for those that are new, the Mosco is my rating system that I use. It's really simple. 
four categories, 25 points each, give you a total of 100. And you can always drop a decimal point, get a score of 1 to 10, and always give a .5 margin of discretion. So let's do this. The visuals and cinematography power always uses top-notch cameras, 4K. I do like how they use some of the angles, like when DBS was getting killed. We could see Saxon, I mean, Tariq and Davis on one side of the gate trying to talk to him and Saxon when he got shot and things. So maybe it was outside. A lot of different angles and things that they use for that scene as well as a few others. Um, but overall, um, it was on par for what they normally do. But I will give them a couple extra points for the sax death. So I will give it a 23 out of 25. Storyline and plot. Uh, I really enjoyed this episode storyline. Um, it's sad to see how fast it fell apart for sax. It was all good just a week ago. Um, but that's the way the pickle squirted. And, you know, we see also that it's going to get more difficult for Davis to separate himself now from them. They already trying to say he was like the consigliere. Now your brother is killing your, uh, your co-workers and things so I don't know it's going to get messy Monet, Diana, Drew and the breakdown scene um, overall you know he missed climbing Mount Everett he likes sitting on that summit I'm going to give it a 24 out of 25 for this episode a 24 out of 25 it was really good Special effects, makeup, costumes. Not really a lot of special effects. We did see Sax get shot. They did do that. Looks, I mean, like he got shot for real. Um, costumes, they always do an excellent job on power with dressing people. Everybody's always dressed nice. They even had Sax rolling in the nice Audi. Looked like an A8. Um, but overall, um, I I would give it a twenty a twenty two because Lisa said they had bad wigs. <laughs> entertaining, fun factor. Um, this was a very entertaining episode. I'm looking forward to watching it again when we done with this show. Um, damn man I did not believe Sax was going to die Just because he's escaped death So many times That I just wasn't going to believe it Until I saw it And now that I've seen it Damn Shout out to Shane Johnson Doing a great job on the show um, By being a good solid actor Steady It's always been You know A good part of the show and uh, you know, we're gonna miss miss him. The show definitely is not gonna be the same. Um, and it, it's weird saying that for a character that's not a main character, but he feels like a main character. You know, Sax has been with us as long as Tariq, longer. He's had more screen time in the first few seasons of Power. Um, so. Yeah, definitely, I will give this episode a 20. I'll give it a 25 for entertaining fun factor. I normally don't have a top score, but that was a really good episode. Damn, Jenny, Jenny. You was a bad girl, Jenny. You did my Cooper wrong. You did my Cooper wrong, Jenny. And you are going to pay. 
and shrimp. That brings my total most go to a 94 out of 100. A 94. What's your Mosco? Hashtag Mosco. Just like in the screen, on the screen. What would you rate this episode? Let me know. I'm going to give it a 94. I always give a 0.5 margin of discretion. I mean, if somebody said it was a 99. Woo! I don't know if it's that perfect. But... Hey, I, you know, you can make a case. You know, 85 to a 95, anywhere in between there, I'm good. Um, what is your favorite parts of this episode? Did anything shock you? Let me know in the comments. Um... I know we all knew Sax was going to die. A lot of people have leaked the information. And a lot of YouTubers and people have been talking about it. I still did not want to believe it until I saw it. And it's, it's over. It's so hard to say goodbye to DBS. I'm going to have one more drink Pour out a little liquor for DBS I'm going to drink some Patron this time I'm going to mix the dark with the light I'm Going out like sex <laughs> yeah, I'm joking uh, And Kane and Effie Oh my goodness Them yams Although They seem to not show a little bit of the, the intimate details of their relationship. But we seem to see intimate details of others. And I just think it should be fair. Anyway, this buzz for you, DBS. One more shot of hen dog for the road. Uh, I need one of these. Mr. Furley. Woo! That's right. Woo! Woo! I feel like I can go stand outside and shovel some snow. <laughs> Two more episodes left, and uh, and that's it. JKE say they don't show the women's butts. I noticed that also, and I wouldn't mind seeing a little woman booty. I've seen almost every dude's booty on the show, so. <laughs> Shout out to man booty, but uh, let's see some lady booty, please. Make it even. That's all. Fairness. Fairness in the workplace. All right. Ah. Come on through, Lisa. I'm ready for you. The nasty natty. I'm in Indianapolis right now. I'm in Indianapolis right now, so might be even closer come on through you get here faster come from the natty to the nappy that nappy natty <laughs> that's what she said or he said they said <laughs> what you think about the episode 9 trailer 
Yeah, that episode nine trailer. I didn't really have time to look at it too much, but uh, let me look right quick. So, with that episode nine trailer, I mean, yeah, David's gonna be upset and different things. Um, cause his brother died and they're going to be bringing all them other questions. But, um, like I say, I didn't really get too much time to look at it too much cause I was getting ready for this. But, uh, from what it looked like when he was knocking papers over, upset, different things, uh, it don't look like it got easier for him after what his brother did to sax, which of course, duh. Um, it's sad though that his brother sat in jail all that time just to get out just to die like that um, that was a sad situation and that uh, his treatments wasn't working and uh, you know damn he'd have been better off just leaving him in jail and leaving him alone because we saw in the that his brother last episode felt like Davis may have did something crooked to get him out and he felt as if you know this was all a waste of his life then if you end up in jail I did this for nothing I went through this so that you could be out and have a life and then he didn't want to have anything to do with him which is why we saw Davis drinking by himself and now He's gone. He killed himself. I mean, that's definitely, definitely got to be difficult for him to deal with. Surprise, he probably don't take some time off. But the Tejadas ain't the type of people that's going to understand that you want to take a, a bereavement leave. <laughs> Hold on, this this is my, you know, sick days. I'm on bereavement. You got to call me back next week. They ain't trying to hear that. They ain't going to uh, understand that. So we see Monet popped up at the damn golf course. So she been and popped up at his house. <laughs> so, yeah, he ain't going to have time to, to digest it. And uh, I don't know. I think that uh, Drew... The foundation for him dying starts, well, it's been started, but I mean, like, really starts next episode because they uh, saw that video. And so either the hermanos or Evelyn is going to confront him about it because she said we need to talk to them again. So we'll see how he explains this. And based on how he explains this, We'll see how much longer he lives. Um, I don't know how much Cain could do. And I do think that Cain could die as far as the Tejadas. If he finds out about Drew, tries to go get revenge by himself or something, and then gets wiped out. So, you know, that's the one thing... Uh, that they never really showed us as viewers is how big is the Tejada organization? It seemed like it may have been bigger in jail when Lorenzo was there than when he was out of jail. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, Jamari Riddick say we'll remember Theo for killing Sachs. That's it. And that red man was the original one, which uh, I don't know if red man, I wonder what red man would have did in that role, killing Sax and then killing himself. Um, I would have liked to see him perform that as a fan of red man. And uh, I used to think he was a better actor than Method Man when How High first came out but method man is by far improved and is a very very good actor and i will give him his credit 
on this episode especially. Um, I like when he grabbed that gun and Tariq got in his way. Get out my way, ninja. <laughs> and uh, and different things. I mean, he did a good job, man. He's done a really good job as Davis McClain. And uh, I'm really happy for him and Mary J, especially since, you know, being fans of the music since, you know, day one. All that I need, I'll be there for you. Now to see them from performing together to now working together and just damn near, what, 30 years of business. I mean, that's that's just dope. And uh, although Monet Tahada, that character is, uh, is something else as far as the layers that that character has. It's only one layer, mean and evil. But uh, I think Mary J has become a good actress, though. Um, I know a lot of people get on her. <laughs> and uh, and a lot of people get on Lala as well. I think Lala is not as bad as people be getting on Lala. I think she's improved a whole lot. A whole lot. Um, so I, I think Lala is better than a lot of people give her credit for as well. Not to say she's giving Academy Award winning performances, but how many people are? So, you know, it's also got to do with your role too. You can only do what the role allows you to do. So, but uh, I like Mary and uh, Lisa Phillips say Mary paid for the classes, but not enough. Are you funny? Uh, I like it. Queen Brielle says Mary says she created that character. I can tell that because she w dresses like Mary J. Blige about to perform. That's how Monet dresses like Mary J. Blige. Now, I don't know Mary J. Never met her, so I can't say Monet act like her. And I'm pretty positive she don't because Mary J. is not a killer. We saw it on the news. <laughs> but uh, she definitely, definitely dresses like Mary J. Getting ready to perform. I've been to Mary J. concerts a couple times, and uh, which I really had a great time. <laughs> But yeah, she has those wigs and outfits and all of that. So, and uh, let's see, Le Lexi Reads. What's up, Lexi Reads? Looking good in that picture. Uh, you say, I think Sax lives another episode. The episode nine trailer shows Diana telling Monet that Sax told her to retry to set her up. Diana telling Monet. That Sax said to try what? I missed that in the trailer. So Diana, but Tariq didn't try to set up Diana. Am I missing something? Tariq didn't try to set up Diana. He was setting up Effie. Um, and you know what? Sax could live another episode because we just saw him shot and gasping. But they cut. We don't know if he died or not. Because he was shot in the chest. It wasn't like a head shot. So, Sax could be still alive and getting ready to die. Just like I was telling everybody about Angie not dead yet. And that she was uh, going to die the next one. So, that that definitely could be the case. Uh, let's see. Savannah, you say Mary J. Good except for the love scenes? No, nah, she ain't. That, that character got no love. So, definitely. Dijon Stovall, I mean, he definitely wasn't lifeless, assuming that he actually dies in the hospital. Right. Sax ain't dead yet. That is true. That is true. And it would be a big twist if he lived. Lisa, you on point with that one. Hold on, y'all. Before I get up out of here, I'm going to have to put my glasses on. I'm getting 
I'm getting old, y'all. I gotta see. I'm getting up there, man. All right. Shout out to Simply Be Yourself. Became a member to the channel. Congrats. Welcome aboard. Definitely appreciate your support. Uh, let, me, let me do a little dance. Let me see what I got for you. Here we go. Congrats. Welcome to the channel. Cheers. <laughs> Welcome to the membership. Welcome to the family. You're now part of La Onda. I call you Baby Joker. And that little puppy. I call you Little Joker, the Big Joker, Baby Joker, Little Puppy. Where you gonna be, Little Puppy? Huh? What are you trying to do? You wanna be part of the member of the family, La Familia? Okay. You ready to put in the word? Put it in. Let's do it. <laughs> Definitely glad you here. Like they say, better late than never. And yes, yeah, well overdue, but you could just send the, the amount of money that you missed. Nah, I'm joking. <laughs> just cut a check for uh, 500 and that'll make up for the difference of you taking so long. We good. Nah, I'm glad. <laughs> no problem. Thank you and thank everybody for watching. Man, these glasses really work. <laughs> It's like I'm in HD again. I used to be able to see so good, and now it's starting to, it's starting to leave me. I never thought I would need glasses. I know, right? Sounded silly. Anyway. Say, Lisa, what are we called? Yo, J Masters, we need a name. I know, right? We La Familia. What I say, uh, the, the review universe, the review universe. Welcome to the review universe. I don't know my J ones, the J ones, the the review universe. I don't know. What do you guys think? Welcome to the Rico. Welcome to the Rico. Welcome to the Rico. I'm gonna pull the case together. I'm gonna get all of the sympathy together and the Rico. And I finally get a case together. <laughs> you say the J ones, not Rico. The J ones. Shout out to all the J ones, part of the family. You say no Rico. Cause you never catch me alive, coppers. All right, y'all. I done took too many shots of here, and I'm over here getting hot. Got to turn this fan on. I'm getting loose. You know, telling what I might say. So I think it might be time to go to bed. <laughs> anyway, Jade, you say you ain't about that life. That's because I had to. I have to teach you. You're now part of the familia. That's the good thing. Nobody will ever see it coming. The Jade Warrior. That's what the W stands for. The Jade Warrior. Nobody knew that you was the one moving all of those keys of product. Never knew. That's why we were so successful. Nah, I'm just playing. <laughs> Alright. Savannah say I'm looking like Urkel. Damn. No, I do that. Laura. Don't sweat my pet. Savannah said I look like Urkel. Need to get you in that little front door car he had. <laughs> Alright. Let's see. Before I go out broad. Out broad day said Tariq Smart. I know y'all peeped. What was he smart doing? What? What did he do? Uh, 
I like how he got RSJ, RSVP, to come save him so he can get his little trust fund money back. But uh, this episode didn't really feel like to, uh, a lot about Tariq. It felt a lot about some other folks more so than Tariq. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, he was smart in getting RSVP. So my shirt, White Owl, a white owl on a perch. That's the Surgeon General warning. Smoking is bad. <laughs> For that plan, it was alright. He alright. It's alright. AG, oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm trying. I tried to get some some that was in style they light I used to hate glasses because they would be heavy uh, Nicole what's up Nikki you say you ain't been watching it's boring well this season is probably the best season of Power Book 2 that they've had it's much better than the first two seasons and uh, I think that it's pretty good I like it. Um, and I've been doing all right, Nikki. I appreciate it. How you been doing yourself? Hard working lady. Um, but yeah, you should give it a try, Nikki. Check out season three. It's pretty good. And I'm not going to give you any spoilers, but they take out a few people that, uh, that, that, we didn't, that we've seen for a while. So... And AG, that's how I feel that this season hasn't been all about Tariq at all. And that uh, it's more of like an ensemble cast. And uh, I think uh, that that really works. I like that. Um, so I, I, I definitely think they did a good job this season. Um, so we'll see. This is my granddaddy specs. I better not be a granddaddy yet. <laughs> uh, Nikki, you say I'm surprised you saying that every time I try to watch it, I wind up doing something else. I don't care about the spoilers. That show, I do not like it. All right, well, I'll say that they do, this episode, they did kill Sax, Dirty Ball Sax, well, uh, he got shot, and it looks like he's going to die, but we don't know if he died yet. So, and the way that it all led up to it, it's pretty interesting, uh, especially considering how he escaped death many other times. So, um, it's worth a watch. I like it. It's, it's better than the first two seasons. It's not as much classroom saved by the bell, the dope the dope dealing years as well okay uh ag you say mecca should have been around for this season he would have been a huge antagonist for Tariq, definitely and uh i think that one thing i do not like about power is that they take away the bad guys sometimes too soon um on the flip side, they do bring back characters that you may have forgotten about. So, as they do one, they give it, the other, they take it away. But uh, I thought that it would have been a good thing to keep Mecca around. They, they built him up as a big bad, and then they, like, broke him down in, like, two episodes to be a punk. I'm like, what happened? <laughs> so it would have been good to keep him strong and floating around for this season but I guess they wanted to have a big finale or something to that effect last season so gotta go gotta go Tanya G they gonna take Drew from Monet thank you for that super chat Tanya 
And uh, I definitely agree. Drew is on the way out. And I do not think that he will last much longer. Um, he ain't thinking straight. He's sloppy right now. And he killed Gordo, which I don't know how they he thought he could get away with that. Um, and like I said, when he killed Gordo, he should have asked questions. He killed him and didn't find out any information and wasn't completely sure about what happened. So, you know, we will see what happens, but I think it's over for him. His, like they say, you ain't thinking with your head, you're thinking with your Johnson. Well, that Johnson got him in trouble get that that uh johnson energy got him misdirected and it ain't uh working out for him so we'll see i'm about to wrap this up man but shout out to the almost 150 plus people we had still over 120 some people watching live right now and i appreciate each and every one of y'all for coming through um if you're new definitely subscribe check out my podcast on iTunes, Spotify, all of that good stuff. It's been going on for a few years. Definitely appreciate all the support and everybody. Shout out to Shane Johnson, aka Cooper Sacks, or better known as Dirty Ball Sacks, for turning in a good performance on the show. And if he is gone, sad to see you go. Um, but he may still be around at least another episode or two. Hell, he may even survive. But so far, when people get shot in power, they don't normally survive too long. So, uh, you know, we'll see. And, uh, you know, how it turns out. But definitely sad. It just feels like. You know, after watching him for damn near 10 years, <laughs> sad to see the brother go, man. So, anyway, good night, everybody. AG says, Sax got 900 lives. I know that's right. Well, let's see. I hope he wasn't on 899 last night. Let's hope he wasn't on 899. Just because uh, I think if he did survive, the amount of things he could do to sink Jenny in their case, I think that'd be big. So we'll see. Chances are he did, though. <laughs> Y'all have a good night. I appreciate everybody for coming through for this first reaction. And uh, I do have some more video content coming as well as tomorrow night, 10 o'clock. Uh, Friday night I will be talking a little bit more About this episode So come on through Tonight Friday 10 o'clock Eastern And uh, I'll be talking a little bit more About this episode and the show As well as The episode 9 trailer So um, You all have a good one I appreciate all y'all for coming through Poured out a little liquor For my man Sax <laughs> Y'all have a good one. Deuces, and I'm out.